This is Kerbal Space Program. This is Kerbal Space Program 2. The game is still missing a large majority of its promised features and hasn't received any real additions since its full price release eight months ago. The community is out for blood. Clearly, it's going to be a very long time before KSP2 starts resembling what we were all promised, so in the meantime, what do? <laughs> KSP2 is just a sandbox, and I've done videos now to every planet in the system, so right now, there's not really much else I can do. But what if we could make our own Kerbal Space Program 2? New star systems, colonization, et al. Enter modded KSP1. Now, the vast majority of my KSP1 videos are modded, but this has largely been visual mods. My install has been kept largely stock. But now I think it's time to change that. I've decided to start small, test the waters if you will, about how these sorts of videos will do on my channel. So today, I'm just going to experiment with parts mods, in particular, colony parts. I've also installed Restock, which kind of revamps uh, the art style in the game, makes the parts a bit more visually consistent and uh, just looks nice. But that's not the primary mod that we're focusing on today. Today, I decided to try out one mod that I've always thought about trying out and showcasing on video, but just never got around to it for one reason or another. And that is Nils 277's Kerbal Planetary Base Systems mod, which, as the name might suggest, adds a ton of parts for surface bases like extending habitats, science labs, greenhouses, and a ton more. Building surface bases in KSP has always been one of my favourite things to do in this game, but, you know, it's always quite difficult to make the base look good since we only really have rocket parts and aeroplane fuselage parts at our disposal, but no more! As you can see, construction of my first ever Kerbal Planetary Base System surface base is well underway. I'm building it in my usual style of just making the entire thing as one monolithic block in the space plane hangar, and then once I've come up with a layout that I like, we can divvy up all the individual components into separate launches, because I wanted this thing to be launched on somewhat believable looking rockets, no gargantuan zeppelin fairings here, and since this isn't KSP2, docking ports in this game should be fairly reliable, and of course we have auto strut to keep the whole thing nice and rigid once it's all assembled in orbit. That's right! We're going to be doing orbital assembly, and then we're going to land the base as one module on the surface of the MUN. I thought I'd keep things, you know, straightforward in this video, not do anything too ambitious, do a simple MUN landing, just to test the waters. I'd like to kind of ultimately do like a big modded playthrough and thing with lots of different mods, but I thought I'd add the mods individually at first, just so I can get a feel for how they work and which parts belong to which mod, so I don't say, hey, this part that I'm using here belongs to this mod, and then get it completely wrong. So I feel like if I introduce them into my install gradually, that might not happen, so this is like why I'm only doing one mod this video, maybe next video I'll do, uh, I, I quite like Natea's space station parts, so I'm going to maybe use that, uh, it's all a bit kind of, you know, I'm sort of winging it really, and let me know if, if I've messed anything up, or if there was a part in the Kerbal Planetary Base Systems mod that I didn't use that I should have, or if I used one of the parts incorrectly, I'm kind of new to this, I used to use, believe it or not, I used to use part mods a lot, in like 2014 when I was playing this game on my laptop and then when I started making videos I wanted to play stock basically because uh, there was this there's this youtuber you guys might know his name is um, Scott uh, Manley I think that's it Scott Manley I'm pretty sure that's his name uh, here obviously a big KSP channel at the time uh, he had interstellar quest as his series and I started watching that like episode 30 and I had no idea what was going on I'm like oh this doesn't look like Kerbal space program and I found it really hard to get into and then I tried rewatching the old episodes but I'm like oh but there's so many I don't, I don't know, I'm just saying, uh, maybe I'm just a simple person, but I always like the idea of having my videos be a bit more accessible, you don't need to know about mods or anything, you can just watch it and then pretty much emulate what you see in the stock game. Anyway, that was a bit of a, a channel history lesson, wasn't it? And in fact, I talked over the launching of our first launch vehicle. 
I thought I'd kind of make the video kind of a bit more punchy, a bit better pacing, where I'll build one launch vehicle, then we just do the launch, then we cut back to time lapse of the build for the building of the next launch vehicle, then do that vehicle's mission, etc, etc. And, you know, I think this one kind of meets my, uh, my goal of having a realistically proportioned looking rocket, like I could see this thing being a real rocket in the real world. Um, I'm trying to get some more practice, actually. Yeah, this is a this is a sudden first ever public reveal. I'm trying to get some more practice of building more realistic looking rockets because I'm taking part in a KSP esports event. Uh, next, not next month. Wait, oh, it is. Ah, oh, this year's going by so fast, guys. I'm thinking. I still think it's like August. So next month, uh, November, I'm going to be in Paris at a, Ker a Kerbal Space Program esports event. Uh, it's called, <laughs> I forgot the name of it, yeah, I think it's, it's called like SpaceCon, you can like Twitter search it, and there's an esports event, I'm going to be competing, uh, you have to like, I don't really know how it works to be honest, but I know that you have to be, you have 24 hours to design uh, and build uh, a big mission, they're going to give you a mission brief on the day, and all the teams have to come up with their best efforts to execute said mission and then present their mission and I think one of the prerequisites is that the mission has to be kind of doable in the real world ideally I guess on like Ariane Ariane vehicles because it's a French organized competition so we get some brownie points there and you know I've been playing predominantly Kerbal Space Program 2 these past few months and to launch anything big in KSP2 I, I don't want to do anything that involves docking ports because docking ports are a bit unreliable in that game. So for things like building surface bases, I'm just launching ridiculous launch vehicles. So now I'm like, right, I'm guessing if I've got 24 whole hours to do a mission with a teammate, by the way, um, shall I reveal that? It's Beard, it's me and Beardy Penguin. We're doing, we're, we're teammates in this. We're going to be called the Beardy Brits. I think. But yeah, that's sorry, um, Beardy Penguin, if you wanted to reveal, reveal that first. I don't know. Anyway, um, I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. Yes, if we've got, by the way, we did the first launch. Now we're doing the second launch. Okay, I did my part talking about what's on video. But yes, we have 24 whole entire hours to do this mission. So I don't know what on earth it's going to be. I'm guessing it must be pretty challenging or, you know, because I don't know how long this mission took me, but I feel like this is a fairly extravagant mission. You're building a surface base using what I hope are realistic looking rockets. I say looking at the screen, this one's kind of a long boy, isn't it? But then again, I guess if we had 24 whole hours to do this mission, uh, we could split the payloads up even further. But, you know, for the sake of brevity, I don't want this video to go on too long. And I didn't have 24 hours to make this video. I had uh, six hours to make this video. Uh, so I had to kind of cut a few corners here and there. And also, this is kind of another reason I wanted to use Restock, because I watched the trailer of last year's KSP esports event organized by this these people, and uh, it looked like there were some modded parts, chief among which was Restock. So I've got Restock to kind of get used to the appearance of parts, like in the vehicle assembly building and what have you. And uh, I'm also told that, you know, in general, there will be some mods. I don't think there's going to be any, like, massive, massive game changing mods like you know rss um you know the real slim shady mod or things like rp1 i think it's going to be like you know parts mods maybe even this mod pack you know planetary surface bases so this is kind of a good reason to get into it and that's why i kind of wanted uh, beardy penguin uh, as a teammate that's quite, quite glad we got him because obviously he plays basically only plays modded ksp so we kind of got you know his ability to play modded ksp and I am also on the team. So together we should be, uh, we should, we have, I'm liking our chances really. But I also am intrigued about what sort of challenge would warrant 24 hours for someone to do it at an esports event. So the general assumption is that these players are going to be of a higher caliber than your average Joe. So um, I'm getting a bit stressed guys. Let me know in the comments section below what you think the mission might be. I feel like it's not going to be something like Jewel 5 or I don't know, Eve C level return because that's kind of like a generic well-established challenge in the ksp community and i feel like this is like you know the real space industry people are going to be there so i feel like it's going to be something within the scope of humanity within the next sort of 20 years or so in terms of technology progression so i really am intrigued more than anything about what a ksp esports event will be like because i've never done any esports stuff before so yeah i'm excited let me know in the comments below any suggestions for you know I'm, I'm actually just kind of scared, to be honest. I don't want to make a fool of myself. So I'm just I'm just sitting here contemplating, thinking like, what on earth? What on earth? What on earth? Or what on Kerbin, I should be saying, actually, uh, is this mission going to involve?
So yeah, that's something to get to look forward to with me. <laughs> and uh, also, um, obviously, Space Creator Day is this month now. We are tantalizingly close. Uh, I don't really know what it's gonna what, what's gonna happen on the day. Apparently, I'm like on stage. I thought I was just like doing a meet and greet thing. So clearly, I haven't looked at what I've signed up to. But looking forward to meeting anyone there if you're gonna be there. Uh, Nate Simpson is gonna be there as well. I'm gonna be doing an on-camera interview with Nate Simpson. That's the plan, at least, hopefully. So uh, yeah, and um, I'm gonna be asking some questions that I think you guys are going to want answers to. I'd certainly like answers to as well. Uh, obviously, don't want to be burning any bridges, but at the same time, be nice to get to the, the core of some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the, I don't know if you guys know this, but KSP2, it does have a couple of issues here and there. And it would be nice to know kind of, you know, what happened <laughs> with that game. So uh, yeah, that's kind of going to be the gist of um, what I'm going to be asking there. I know, obviously, it goes without saying, Nate is going to be under a ton of NDAs, so the worst case scenario, he's going to say no, no comment to my questions, but I'm hoping not. I'm hoping to get a good dialogue open with the man. So, yeah, you know, um, you, can, uh, you can suggest questions down below, but I'm pretty sure I've got a good idea of what the community's overall feelings are for KSP2, so I've got a good list of questions, um, you know, lined up that I'm sort of adding to and modifying and tweaking. As the days and nights roll on and the big day approaches. Speaking of approaching, oh, what a segue to talking about what I probably should have been talking about for the whole video, and that's what's going on on the screen. Yes, the first um, arm of the base is approaching. You know what? I was so long-winded and rambly with that, it's now docked. But yes, we're docking the first components to the core module. Now, you might be wondering, Matt, how do you plan on landing this monstrosity uh, you know, on the surface of the Mun? That's a fair question. As you can see, the core stage has those three Wolfhound engines, but that's only to ferry the vehicle from low Kerbin orbit to low Mun orbit. And I guess we'll do a little bit of initial deorbiting, just so we don't leave any, don't leave any debris in space. Uh, but the main part of the landing is going to be done by the onboard engines. Yes, as part of, I guess you can kind of see that the Kerbal Planetary Base Systems mod chiefly involves lots of trapezoid shaped modules. So we've got kind of habitation modules, greenhouses, and there's also an engine module to allow you to land your bases. And you can actually attach wheel modules to those parts as well, so you can do things in kind of a more sensible way to what I'm doing, which is where you just land the individual components on the surface of a planet or moon and then drive them together and park them up. But I just thought it's a bit more fun, in it? <laughs> just like landing one big sketchy looking vehicle. And uh, to be honest, it's actually a little bit easier, ironically, because you've got to like pinpoint your landing and stuff and all that jazz uh, but yeah uh, here I am docking them together I don't know I'm trying to find I'm trying to see how easy it is to see see on the core module there's like <laughs> it's a bit hard because the camera's cutting around I know but there's kind of like gray modules sticking out the arms just where the docking ports are those are inline engines on the base uh, that are obviously pointing downwards you can kind of see the nozzles every so often when the camera swings around to the right angle and that's going to be the that's going to be how we land the surface base on the surface of the mun now obviously i had to sort of balance out the vehicle well, you know, when i when i was assembling this thing as one giant block in the space plane hangar i was mindful to try and keep the center of mass kind of centered on the core modules so that our engines all are kind of balanced and the thing's not going to spin out on descent but yeah, here we are uh, preparing the final launch vehicle. And this one's kind of a funny looking one, isn't it? Because there's a bigger, a bigger sort of hump to one of the modules. And that is the Rover Garage. I mean, you probably might have seen that when I was building it during the build time lapse of the initial base. But I know it's kind of playing back quite quickly. And some people have said that I, that I sometimes play the footage back a bit too quickly. So feedback is always welcome there. I'm always trying to make sure my videos are, you know, the, the best that they possibly can be. Uh, but yeah, there is a rover garage with a little rover that's parked up there. And um, we, can, we can try that out. I didn't kit the rover out with science or anything because um, I'm ashamed to admit I just forgot that science is actually a thing in Kerbal Space Program, isn't it? I'm so used to Kerbal Space Program 2 at this point, where, like, there's there's nothing to do on surfaces. So you just build the rover or lander, and it's just literally, well, in the case of a lander, a command pod, a fuel tank, an engine, and legs. No, like, science or deployables or anything, and same goes for rovers. And I just totally forgot when I was building. I almost didn't add a science lab. What you saw me build in time-lapse in this video was not, in fact, my first attempt at designing a surface base with, you know, the Kerbal Planetary Systems base mod. What's it even called? Kerbal Planetary Bases mod. Uh, the first time I did it, I just built the base like I wanted it. And then I was, like, looking at it, and I was like, hang on. 
Normally when I build bases in KSP1, I add a science lab, don't I? And I wonder if there's a science lab for that. And sure, and you know, sure enough, there was. So I almost didn't add any science to this base. And, you know, in that moment, I'd remembered about science and I added like little experiments to the exterior of the building. But then when it came to kind of filming the time lapse for this, I went back into tunnel vision mode and just built the rover I built in like my practice builds. And I forgot to add anything else. So apologies for that. But again, this is more of a, a testing the water type video type mission. Uh, me getting used to mods and restock and all that. So I'm not especially worried that things could have gone a bit better if anything that means that justifies more videos more videos modded ksp forever so there we are there's the there's the justification another video that uh, i ought to do is clearing out that space junk i um i added like a probe core as you can see on this uh, launch vehicle there's a probe core and reaction wheels on the lower stage of this rocket so that well not the lower stage the, the stage that we're currently controlling once we remove the payload the stage could then deorbit itself but i forgot to do that for the previous launch vehicle so now there's just a piece of debris stuck in low curb in orbit and in fact it was actually a bit of a problem it was a bit of a hindrance because that is what my target is i thought i was targeting you know the surface base well i guess it's a space station at the moment because it's not a surface base obviously but regardless uh, but i'm actually targeting the debris <laughs> so that was a shame so uh, it meant that my encounter wasn't quite perfect but you know what it was all fine in the end. I packed way too much Delta V into this upper stage. I really overestimated kind of how you know heavy the payload was. So, you know, fuel budgets wasn't really an issue. But yeah, you know, we've got my eSports event in France coming up. I've obviously got Space Create Day in Germany coming up. It's looking like a busy couple of months for me, and that's not all, okay? There's also this other issue, and I'm, I'm kind of stressed about it because I don't really know how it's going to affect my channel. Because uh, it might have a major effect on my channel, and that is that I'm basically getting my entire house renovated. Like, every room is getting stripped, it's getting rewired, replastered, ceilings are getting boarded. And so there's going to be, like, long days where I've got no electricity or internet or anything like that. And obviously no access to my computer for long stints. And so, yeah, I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to make videos. And also, I don't know what's going to happen with space this week. Next Monday is in this coming Monday, because on Sunday, I'm doing the Tour de Moor race across Dartmoor, which is like a big mountain bike race. I'm going to be kind of out of it all day. And then the rest of the day, I'm going to be emptying out the rooms. Like, I'm still trying to clear out furniture. It's like we're moving, basically. So I'm going to disassemble furniture, move it all into my garage. Oh my gosh, guys, there's, there was this other big thing where I keep my car in my garage because it lowers the insurance. And because I like bike to work and use a bicycle as my primary mode of transportation, I don't need my car that often. So it's easier just to keep it in my garage, lowers the insurance, keeps the car looking nice as well. All good stuff. But I kind of need my garage, you know, for the few, for the, the next few weeks because that's where I'm storing all my furniture. But I realized last minute, oh, hang on. I live in a city and you can't just park on the roads. Here, like outside your house because it's all permit holders only I guess to stop like you know city shoppers from just parking you know, just like a lot of like factors here so you can't just park a car so you have to apply for a residence permit so I'm like oh that's fine I'm a resident so I will just apply for a permit online it's fine and I paid my money and the council took my money and then they said don't don't park there you're not allowed to park there yet we will send you an email once you've approved your application and I'm like Oh, super. I mean, I've only got one car. So it's not like I have like a multi-car household or anything like that. So I was just sitting here and like the hours turned to days. And I'm like, literally, so today, right, as for me speaking to you guys right now is Friday. Friday night for me, in fact. That's how I spend my life. Uh, it was Friday. So like, literally, they're not going to get back to me on a Saturday or Sunday because those aren't, you know, this is government, don't forget. So this is like, they're not going to reply to me on a non-business day. And it literally got to half past four in the afternoon. I'm like, literally their offices are going to close at five. I wouldn't be surprised if on a Friday they closed at four. I'm screwed. My car is in my garage. I can't move my car elsewhere because I can't get the permits to do so. And the builders are coming on Monday and they need the house clear. What am I to do? But then at 4.35, the city council sent me an email saying, hey, you're fine. You can park there relief sigh of relief all around there so i was able to move my car onto the road the garage is currently now empty that's what we're going to do now tonight probably and tomorrow uh, once this video has started to render 
I'm going to just be like disassembling all my IKEA furniture, hopefully not destroy it in the process, move it all down into the garage and uh, yeah, it's been a pretty exhausting week to be honest, like just boxing everything up and moving stuff, it, it's, you know, I've pulled a lot of muscles and there's, there's that. And also I'm doing the Tour de More race on Sunday. And then Monday, uh, there's builders in the house. And I don't know, how, I'm, there's not going to be any electricity in the house. And also it's Monday, right? And I work. So I really don't know when I'm going to edit space this week, to be honest. Uh, I will I will make a space this week. You know, I've got to keep my YouTube algorithm standing all good and all that. But, you know, I don't know how... I hope I hope the quality is going to be good. I mean, I, I will make sure the quality is good, obviously. But at what personal cost to me? Well, I'll let you know next time I make a video. I'm trying to think, when am I going to Space Crate today? Oh my god, it's like literally about a week and a half. So I don't know if there's going to be consistent Kerbal Space Program uploads on this channel. Or indeed, consistent Space This Week uploads on this channel for like the rest of the month. Because I've got so much going on and like such limited time to make videos. And all this other stuff going on in my life. Um, so I, I really can't make any promises. I'm definitely going to keep to at least... I... I Hopefully, at least going to stick to a one video per week cadence at minimum, but I, I can't make any promises, unfortunately. There definitely won't be a space this week on the week of Space Create Today because um, I won't be in the country to edit that. Uh, my girlfriend will be in my house for the duration of that, but she can't edit that herself. And obviously, my voiceover is like I can't record my voiceover, so we're going to have to just rule out space this week. Luckily for Kerbal Space Program, that's not like time sensitive. I can just make videos months in advance if necessary and just publish them uh, like when I need to. So probably looking like KSP is going to be the mainstay of content on this channel for October rather than space this week. Because uh, probably space this week I kind of have to write and script and then record and edit all on the day of upload so that the video is actually like, you know, showing correct up to date information. So yeah, maybe I'll like sustain my channel's upload schedule with Kerbal rather than Space this week. And uh, yeah, I've just looked at the screen and we are now at the Mun. So that was um, good, a good, it was a good moment I think to look at the screen. And there we are, we've ejected that um, tra transfer stage and we can now start our retro burn to get ourselves down to the surface of the Mun. Now, um, there's going to be a couple of stealth quick loads during this descent because I've got the uh, amazing Games Links Parallax mod. Game changing, life changing mod. I was moved when I saw this mod. Basically adds loads of like surface features and surface scatter. It just makes the game look mwah, chef's kiss. But this does complicate choosing a landing site because there's lots of rocky outcrops on the surface and you can see it popping into view. Draw distance isn't like superb, so it's like I would go down and then land and end up landing like on a giant boulder. So what I ended up doing was just keep on reloading a certain quick save that I made during the descent and then just changing up how I did the burn. So for example, killing off a little bit more of my horizontal velocity or, you know, killing off a little bit more of my vertical velocity at different points in the burn to sort of change my ultimate landing spot. And I sort of cut it all together to make it nice and seamless for you guys. And look at that for timing, here we are performing our final touchdown now. Well, I say final touchdown, our only touchdown that we're doing in this video. Ah, nice smooth landing. One thing, well one of the, the KSP2 to its credit does do a few things better than KSP1, like sound design, graphics in a lot of cases as well. But one of the things that KSP2 does really well as well is that the surfaces of, you know, planets and moons have big flat areas because I guess colony building, when it's eventually implemented, will be kind of one of the core features of that game. So it's good to have lots of flat areas on the surfaces of planets and moons. There goes a very, very... My very safe, safe patented means of uh, getting rid of those engines, engines, fuel tanks that supplied our engines for the duration of that burn. Anyway, what was I saying? Yes, one of the things that KSP2 does really well is there's lots of big flat areas on the surfaces of planets and moons for building colonies. KSP1 does not have many flat areas, so although this is a fairly good spot because there's no big boulders. By the way, here I am deploying the modules, as you can see. Uh, the one of the habitation modules, the greenhouses, and the science lab all extend out like a big, you know, fancy RV. So I'll draw attention to that whilst it was on screen. Anyway, yes. So this is like a fairly flat area, and there's like no stones clipping into the base. But ultimately, we are at a bit of a slant. But you know, Kerbals—they're built differently. I'm sure they'll get used to it. 
they've got no choice. They will have to get used to it. I ain't never bringing them back. I've got the interior cutaway view there, by the way, just so you can see the uh, the greenhouses. But I'm going to cut now to live action, Matt. Hello. Yes, I thought I'd kind of wrap up this video by doing a bit of live commentary, showing you kind of the results of kind of the, the last, you know, 25 minutes or so that you've just watched. I forgot to extend these antennas, so let's do that now. I've got it up for both, haven't I? Extend. There we are. And uh, yeah, those are stock antenna, by the way. That's just the restock reskin. We've also got this little fancy little thing. We can change the target angle of this dish and change kind of where it's pointing as well. Look at that. Isn't that a little fancy feature? I really should put like a cal controller on there so it can be like automated just to make it look, I don't know, like a little idle animation. Whatever, it's fine. This again, a testing the waters type video. Let's have a little look at the base that we've constructed. So there is actually an IVA view. So this is one of the command modules that's like in line. Uh, this is another command module. This is another command module. Uh, they're all command modules by the looks of things. Let's have a look. Can I get a view? Let me just do this. We can swing the camera inside. No, we can't. Hang on. There we are. This is one of the greenhouses. How fancy is this? I love this. This is great. And the little Easter eggs as well. I don't. I kind of don't want to show too much, in fact, because I want to encourage people to download this wonderful mod. It's really, really good. It has surpassed all expectations that I had for it, which were very high expectations to begin with, in fact. And there you go, look, a little cupola module there. So you can see that this would make like a really good like rover part, wouldn't it? And you can, in fact, so here's like the like, the engine modules. There's like a flat surface on it that you could attach wheels to. So there you go, you could build like a little rover, or even just like a horizontal lander. That could work. And uh, yeah, this is the science lab. Let's take a look inside the science lab. This is a nice big telescope. How cool is this? You know, KSP2 science update, if and when it ever comes, it's got big boots to fill. This is like incredible. In fact, this is the first time I'm looking at the inside of the science lab. Uh, because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, oh, look, there's one of the science units being like, I don't know, repaired. Uh, yeah, as I said, like the science uh, lab, I completely forgot might exist in this model until the very last minute. We also have our little mining area, so we can deploy this little inline drill. We got some fuel tanks. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's the command module. Yep. We have uh, an ore tank. There we are. Let's just start that surface harvester. Probably landed in a really bad spot for surface harvesting, didn't I? It was more of a for show, that thing. This is just one of the habitation modules. There's like some little beds. And this mod does support a lot of things like life support mods as well. So that's, um, that's something to bear in mind. Little teddy bear. Little uh, dining, not dining area, living area. There's also an enhanced version of this. This is one of the extending modules. So this can't take any kerbals until you extend the walls. I can, I guess you kind of guys saw the animation of that happening, but look at that. Oh, a little reminder of home that they're never going to go back to. And there we are. Nice <laughs> big thing for pillows. Room C, room A. Yeah, you get, you guys get the gist of it. I hope this is a good walkthrough. It's probably terrible, isn't it? Let's get a rover. Oh, let's get a rover. Let's get a Kerbal in the rover. Let's just undock that. That's what the rover is technically attached to. And uh, oh, I really miss the fact that in KSB2 you can just double click things, can't you? Here we are. That is a really nice rover part, in fact. You know, rover parts. Oh, look at that. That's so good. I love this. Wow. That's amazing. I love this mod. But yeah, it'd be really nice to have more rover parts, which obviously KSP2 is promising to do. There is that nice big rover module. Right now, KSP2 is you know, it's KSP2, so it doesn't need much more elaboration than that. But hopefully with time, you know, things get better. Oh, a bit, 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 bit skiddy, isn't it? probably needs to practice driving. One thing I should probably point out is that these rover ramps actually have had to limit the deploy limit. Like by default, they kind of go down like that. And oh, they've gone. Oh, look at that. They clipped through the ground. When I tested this on the runway, it just lifted the whole thing up. I'm guessing these ramps are like that so that you can build the base using like landing legs, which is what I've seen a lot of people do with this mod. So is that the true intention is that you use landing legs and don't have this sat on the surface like I've done? I feel like it looks better sat on the surface, right? But, you know, you guys are welcome to let me know what you think in the comments and what you thought of this video. I've never really done a mod. I think I must have done mod showcases over the years. Like, obviously, I've done you know, RSS videos, for example, as you guys all know. But generally, I don't do mods. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Rover doesn't quite fit. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> uh, so let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And I'm definitely looking forward to doing more parts mods. This has been a real... It's been a real breath of fresh air, for, to be honest, guys. You know, it's breathed new light into this game, and also it's been a fresh, a breath of fresh air because 
nothing went wrong, like has been for a lot of my KSP2 videos. So that's been really, really good. And I've got to give a big thanks, guys, to all the names on the screen that I've hopefully added in the edit. And my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members. It's their generous support that allows me to keep on doing what I do here. And... Yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of my video. There are two videos on screen that you think you'll like as well. Hope they're good picks. And also the disgusting new Patreon logo. Look at that. It looks like a pool of black sick. I hate it. It's worse than the Twitter to X logo. Rubbish. But you can click it and then you support me on Patreon. Shouldn't have slagged the website off so much, really, should I?